Good morning, uh, good afternoon, uh, good evening. Uh, thanks to all of you for uh, joining us today uh, from different parts uh, of the world. And welcome to the Fiber Smart uh, Tourism Day. My name is Angel Estejado and I am Senior Marketing Manager at the Fiber Foundation. Just a few recommendations before starting, please. We ask uh, all attendees uh, to mute their microphones and turn uh, their uh, cameras off uh, during the presentation to avoid uh, connectivity issues. Please also be reminded that this is a live event that will be recorded and available on the Fireware YouTube channel. Then by attending, you agree to the recording. This event will include uh, two questions and answer sessions. So please drop any question you may have throughout uh, the event uh, into the chat and if possible indicating who the question is addressed to. Uh, we will do our best uh, to incorporate them in the, in the session. So now we're starting. For those of you who are not very familiar with us, uh, Fiber Foundation is a non-profit organization that drives the definition and promotes the adoption of uh, open standards uh, implemented using open source technologies to ease uh, the development of smart solutions in uh, multiple sectors. Now, uh, technology is being injected more directly in our lives and with most of the world population living in urban areas, uh, the global challenge are put on cities and its citizens to create uh, effective change. We cannot ignore the domino effect of COVID-19 in the global economy and today more than ever cooperation towards innovation as well as building strong connections may help public and private uh, organizations to bring efficient results even outside uh, the boundaries of their uh, regions and, and nations. In this virtual event, we are bringing together key voices in the tourism sector which are leading by example to share their initiatives together with real use cases of how cities are transforming their uh, tourism industry. We will also learn from the fiber community, experts, how open source technologies, standard APIs and smart data models may have a meaningful impact in the, in the market and society. The Fiber Tourism Day is part of a series of virtual events taking place in the second half of 2020 covering uh, smart mobility, smart water in government, smart industry and, and, and smart cities, among others. Uh, so once again, a very warm welcome to all and please join me in welcoming our stellar speakers lineup, uh, including uh, Dolores Ordóñez from Any Solution, expert in digital transformation and smart tourism destinations. She will moderate our session today. Jose Ricardo Díaz Ardilla, Ardila uh, from the World uh, Tourism Organization, Andrew Brown from the World Travel and Tourism Council, Matthias uh, Kuhn uh, from the DigiConnect, the European Commission, Edurne Vidal López Tormos uh, from Segitur, Inma De Benito from Iberostar Group, Gonzalo Alfredo La Rosa from Instituto Ciudades del Futuro in uh, La Plata, Argentina, Juan Joyero from the Fire Foundation, Mark Sanderson from Málaga City Council. Alain Chateau and Stefan Roos from Nice uh, Côte d'Azur and uh, Christina Branstetter, our CMO at the Fire Foundation and Ulrich Ale, our CEO at the Fire Foundation. In addition, I take the opportunity to thank uh, our premium media partner, Business Reporter, as well as our media partners, Compact List, EU Observer and Zoom Global Cities for their incredible support in disseminating this event. Now, I would like to introduce you all uh, to the person who will be guiding uh, us uh, through today's virtual event, Dolores Ordóñez. Highly motivated and passionate about smart cities and tourism, uh, Dolores uh, has been involved in strategic plans and programs to support the development of smart cities and smart tourism destinations globally. Her work uh, was carried out uh, at uh, some of the most important tourism municipalities given her experience in the regional government of the Balearic Islands and in the private sector. She is the vice president uh, of the International Cluster of Technologies Applied to Tourism, Touristech, and the vice president of the technological platform Planetic. She is also one of the co-founders of the Digital Innovation Hub of the Balearics. We hope uh, you enjoyed uh, your time with us and I will now hand over the mic to Dolores. The stage is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Angeles, for this great uh, introduction. It's uh, my pleasure to be here today and to share with all of you 
this very uh, interesting uh, uh, event. So I, I hope you enjoy it. I'm going to make a, a slight, uh, a light uh, introduction to the to the event uh, to explain why uh, we are here and why tourism matters. So uh, all of you know that tourism is one of the most dynamic and sensitive industries in the world, and technology and global changes have a speedily and directly impact on it. So you know that uh, all the person, entity that we are working in the tourism sector, we were always being dedicated to improve the tourism experience. As uh, you see here, we have uh, all, the, all the data, all the figures from 2000, uh, um, 2018, but uh, even in 2019, the figures were, were even better. With 1.5 billion international tourist arrivals were recorded worldwide. Despite of uh, big events as uh, Brexit, the fall of uh, Thomas Cook, and also uh, we saw as some uh, uh, movements in big uh, uh, tourism cities against uh, tourism. The numbers for 2020 were very optimistic, but um, uh, as all of you know, COVID-19 arrived. Uh, this, uh, this situation, this global pandemic, uh, has made that uh, the, all the numbers that we foresee for 2020 has completely changed. So all, all, all our simulations or our forecastings have completely uh, changed the, these numbers. So the fall of tourist numbers is between 60 and 80 percent for 2020. In this first quarter of 2020, we have already a 22 percent drop. So this means jobs are at risk. Economies have been hit hard. Tourism is one of the main industries in many countries, also for the European Union, which is a, a worldwide leader. And now it's a time never before seen in history, and there is a significant uncertainty ahead. And uncertainty is a big danger for the tourism industry. The world, worldwide lockdowns have greatly, greatly affected mobility. And mobility, as you all know, is the backbone of tourism. And until now, uh, we are trying to make some uh, um, activities to recover tourism, but we are aware that until we don't have the vaccine, we will have troubles. So we are, we, we are going to be uh, facing different and uh, constant challenges. Now it's time to work towards the tourism recovery. Until now, and to increase the tourist experience, tourism, uh, as you will know, has been guided by three main issues. Safety and, and security, which were more addressed to the physical one, so to feel safe in these uh, tourism destinations. Technology, to increase the tourism experience. And sustainability, with the uh, Sustainable Development Goals or the Green Deal of the European Commission. But now a new topic has taken the center stage, which is safety and security in health. We're speaking about a global pandemic that affects directly our lives. To achieve this new safety and security in health, the human component is fundamental. We are seeing here the, the need of awareness, the respect for the rules, wearing the mask, the social distance, uh, everybody's speaking now about this new normal. Also technology. This technology that can highly contribute to improve this feeling of safety with different solutions applied through who, uh, to how the world tourism chain. There is already different initiatives from different governments, so I can speak to directly about the, the pilots and initiatives that has been already implemented, for example, in the government of the Canary Islands, in the Balearic Islands as pilots for receiving tourists and how can we recover again the, the normal tourism activities? So also regarding data, so with the candidature of Mallorca as an observatory of sustainable tourism for the World Tourism Organization, uh, with this big impact on knowing what is happening in each, in each moment. So the data economy, so the importance of having data to take the best decisions. And for tourism to recover, it needs a great, a great push. New and fresh ideas. So we all of you are invited to bring these new ideas and a clear strategy. And this is where we come in and why we are here. Of course, open source technologies and standards can contribute 
can contribute to um, to, to improve and the, re the recovery of the tourism sector. For that, uh, it's important also to mention that within the Firewall Foundation, we have created a, a working group uh, with, with data models in which uh, we have created a group of uh, smart uh, destinations, smart tourism destinations. And we need to all of us contribute for this balanced recovery of a vital industry in which Europe is a worldwide leader. Today, we are in the Five World Tourism Day, and we are delighted to count with the presence of high-level speakers, bringing both uh, from a global to a local perspective on the matter. We were going to have a speakers from the United Nations World Tourism Organization offering a global overview, the WTTC, which will offer us a global business perspective, the European Commission, which is going to give us their views on what mechanisms can support recovery, the CITUR, uh, a, a, a national initiative in Spain, which will speak about the destination perspective, the COVID-19 Travel Alliance, which will present a best practice on how strong is the cooperation between the market participants that will help to rebuild the travel demand safely and sustainable. The fiber uh, as a sustainable, suitable technology for tourism. And we will have also an example from Argentina with the Institute of the Cities of the Future that will speak about the fiber smart tourism uh, initiative and how to join it if you are interested. And then we will go to the local level with two case studies that will be presented. Malaga, a smart tourism capital 2020, and Nice with uh, fiber applications. We are today uh, two and a half hours of very interested, interesting topics, interested people. So please uh, contribute, uh, uh, take advantage of the opportunity of having such high level speakers all together here. And I hope you enjoy the day. Now it's the time to start with our uh, speakers. And we are going to start with Jose Ricardo Diaz Ardila from the United Nations World Tourism Organization. He is member of the Innovation, Digital Transformation and Investment Department and the, at the United Nations World Tourism Organization. I have the pleasure to know Natalia Bayona, which is the person in charge of this department and, their, and all the activities that they are implementing worldwide, which are very interesting. They are engaging in startups and they are working hardly, hardly for this uh, uh, tourism recovery. Jose strongly believes in tourism as an exceptional means to develop destinations and generate positive impacts for societies. In his presentation, he addresses how tourism, one of the most resilient sectors, has been affected by unprecedented health, social, and economic impact, and how technologies such as virtual and augmented reality, artificial intelligence, big data, blockchain, are helping the sector to turn things around and tackle them to the new norm. So, Jose Ricardo, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. So thank you all of you for being here, all um, speakers, all from Fiverr, for the Innovation, Digital Transformation and Investments Department. It's a pleasure to be here uh, with my representation. And I would love to share with you some of our programs and our vision on innovation and sustainability as the new normal. Um, currently, what we do in the department is to work with startups from the innovation side to find different new solutions and different new perspectives for tourism recovery, um, give all the support through our acceleration programs for training on digital skills, and to have our UNWTO Tourism Online Academy very active to continue providing skills all over the world uh, in a free way. And how all of these initiatives are connected to our um, FDI and non-traditional investments as well, such as venture capital or sustainable investments. This is like in a brief what we do following our mandate um, for sustainable, responsible, accessible and inclusive tourism all over the world. Sustainability, definitely we look forward to continue building this resilience coming from sustainability and this opportunity to have and to, to reflect on what we have achieved thus far. One in 10 jobs worldwide in tourism sector, the inclusion of women with this gender equality of 54% of all people working in tourism, uh, being women, 
Um, and it makes our sector one of the most democratic ones and one of the most uh, leading ones regarding how not only corporations, but individuals, tourism guides, um, SMEs can join this large tourism value chain. And how as well, the arrivals that you already mentioned as well, Dolores, uh, have given all this strength to the sector and to spread these benefits to all communities all over the world. Regarding, for example, um, innovation, we count for the 5% of the total of startups that became unicorns. And definitely, this is a motivation to get scaling up all the entrepreneurs, to get more opportunities for them. And uh, we have definitely seen from past crises that tourism is uh, the most resilient economic sector from the major ones. And it means like, working towards the value chain and towards all the partnerships. We have seen that we have overcome uh, situations such as SARS, such as the global economic crisis from 2008 and 2009, and how immediately after the crisis finishes, how the sector definitely recovers and uh, comes again to give all these benefits to communities. And we hope to have this same strength and even more in this unprecedented crisis. We know that it has been definitely a quite a hard times for all of us. And we have released um, five studies specifically on travel restrictions. But today, we have released the latest one, today, 30 um, July. And it means that 40%, I have here 22 until yesterday, but our last release from today, is 40% of all destinations um, worldwide, they have already eased restrictions and for sure Europe leading the way. And it means that definitely people would love to continue traveling, but we um, always uh, make this call of traveling safely, safely for local communities and safely for tourists as well in order to manage this uncertainty. Uh, and it's certainty that has shown, shown us this these numbers that you already mentioned, some of them about the fewer international tourists, the loss in export revenue, and for sure, all the jobs at risk. But we would love to continue reflecting on how this uncertainty coming to the innovation side may be turned into these opportunities for our tourism sector. And it means, for example, here about the um, scenarios that we have built according to the available information on how, um, depending on how these restrictions um, go into the, like falling during the different months, we are going to see a recovery depending for sure on each of the demand source and each of the markets. Um, and, and going deeper on it, we definitely see um, some some weaknesses and some threats. But I would love to go deeper on the strength and opportunity from the sector, such as this program resilience that I've talked about, such as the opportunity of domestic tourism and revitalizing all um, areas around the cities and coming back to rural areas and giving all these opportunities as well. This adaptation capacity coming not only from the consumer side and from the protocol side, but from, from how to go into the other segments and how to make blended products that could um, definitely contribute to have a more sustainable tourism while more innovative and at the same time safely. Uh, rethinking the business model, for example, is one of the most important ones and definitely going into the niche side from the segments and going into this adaptation power that have definitely our tourism sector. And innovation and sustainability, for us, we have um, built some priorities and some guidelines for the whole value chain. And specifically with our Global Tourism Crisis Committee, coming from different um, uh, institutions from all over the world, including WTDC, for example, um, we have 
put as one of the key priorities of these seven global priorities, innovation and sustainability as a new normal. And it means going into this support from the corporations, from the governments, and from all institutions to the innovation ecosystem. And it means a flow of knowledge and a flow of investments in an active way so solutions uh, can come from a new, a new path and how we can start scaling them up, accelerating them up, so we can have an even more um, promising future. And open innovation definitely that means to go into this interaction actively with the investment side and how we can provide these new ideas and to be settled and to start delivering impact. In this case, we promote challenges coming from the World Tourism Organization, but as well from different national challenges and from different institutions, as we truly believe that the new ideas are to be at the first part and at the forefront of this recovery and reactivation of tourism. Investments in digital transformation, smart destinations, not only um, focusing on the transaction, for example, but on the um, traceability, on the how we can definitely make more um, no touch procedures and to allow definitely a tourism full of opportunities, customization while we are using the technology. It means that we can get to know more the client, more the customers, customers before, and we can start delivering a service uh, even more seamless, if we would love to call it this way, and totally aligned all this innovation to meet sustainability, meaning that accelerating this transition towards a more circular economy, social impact, um, sustainable and green um, investments, focusing on low carbon, for example, emissions, um, tourism, and for sure, uh, measuring the current capacity to allow it now that we stop um, this great challenge of um, over tourism, how we can face it in a more sustainable way and how we can, in the territory, find different ways to spread the tourists and come with the benefits for all in the value chain. And it means, for example, from a UNWTO perspective, that government, corporations, institutions, startups, investors, and academia are meant to be definitely interacting all the time and embracing innovation and sustainability as the new normal. Before, we had innovation and sustainability as key facts that um, companies and governments, they were embracing, but now they are definitely part of our daily life. And the people who were not um, inside the digital transformation site is nowadays on it due to the COVID times. So we can take this and take it into this opportunity for tourism. In this regard, we encourage to join the UNWTO Tourism Online Academy. Courses from different universities are going to be continuously open to get this free education um, from all over the world and in different skills to make recovery even more strong from our, from our tourism sector. And about the competitions and the challenges, we have, okay, we have opened different ones and we work with more than 5,000 startups and we have given support to our network. And we have, for example, in Helen Solution for Tourism Challenge, found more than 1,000 solutions that are already tested um, in Ibiza and the Canary Islands using all these technologies that you are seeing here for traceability, for given customization, for the apps, for security. And it means, and, and I invite you to follow us in all these challenges the Hospitality Challenge, the Inspiration Africa Challenge, to keep seeking for solutions in different sites of tourism. And the main one, and just to finish, the Sustainable Development Goals Global Historic Competition that we have launched uh, in cooperation with all of these um, institutions and corporations all over the world, and that we are looking for all walks of life, all economic sectors, and all ways of innovation, meaning from processes, from technology, from social impact sites, and all these startups meant to have the delivering of impact with possible pilots and matchmaking. 
We encourage you to spread the voice of the work that we have been developing from innovation and digital transformation from a destination perspective and a startup's perspective and spread the voice to have more solutions and more impact for our tourism recovery. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Jose Ricardo, for your great presentation. Uh, I think that this part of scaling up opportunities for entrepreneurs and how you are, are you engaging the startups in all your challenges, uh, I really uh, would like to invite everybody to participate in your challenges because they are really interested. Thank you so much. We hope to stay in touch with you and, and perhaps then in the questions or, or, uh, or answers, you will have more time to, to, to give more information about the thing you, you are doing. The second speaker is uh, Andrew Brown. Uh, uh, here I want to, to thank especially uh, Maribel Rodriguez, the Vice President of the WTTC, for always being uh, uh, positive and helping us with all the activities we, we are implementing. Uh, Andrew is a, a Senior Regional Manager for Northern Europe and, and Oceania at the WTTC. He's an uh, experienced and innovative figure within uh, the smart tourism industry and has been with the Council for over three years. The WTTC members include CEOs, presidents, chairmen of the world's leading travel and, industry and tourism companies, among many areas. Andrew's presentation will focus on the four principles for recovery. And I will uh, stop here because uh, Andrew will uh, introduce it. Andrew, the floor is yours. Thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you very much. And, and thank you to the Fireway Foundation for inviting WTC and myself to participate here. Uh, it's good to hear that Maribel is very involved with you guys and she's a very good advocate for our organization. <clears throat> One event uh, that puts a focus on travel and tourism is, is just so important right now. Our sector, as everyone is aware, has felt the full force of COVID-19 from the outset. Throughout this presentation, I'll highlight the economic impact that COVID-19 has had on travel and tourism before underlying the steps that the private sector is calling for to begin the process towards recovery. Uh, first though, for those of you who might not be familiar with the World Travel and Tourism Council, or WTDC, Please let me begin with a brief introduction. WTDC represents the global private sector of travel tourism. This year, we're celebrating our 30th anniversary. We were set up back in 1990 by the four global tourism leaders you see on the slide. The purpose and mission of WTDC was and still is to provide the sector with a single powerful voice into government, fighting the importance of travel tourism and striving for fair economic policy and long -term sustainable growth in the sector. We have over 200 members who are the leaders of some of the largest travel and tourism organizations around the world. WTDC is the only body who represents the whole sector, as our members have operations in every industry and within every geographic region. Here, you'll see a brief insight into who our members are. I'm delighted that Mr. Benito from Iberostar Group is participating here today. Ms. Fluxer, Vice Chair and CEO of Iberostar Group, is a valued and very engaged member within WTC. Now, since our foundation 30 years ago, we have been quantifying the economic and social impact that our sector has for 185 countries and 25 regions. This is fundamentally what we do, but we also conduct research into important areas and issues of the sector, such as sustainability, visa facilitation, and most importantly right now, crisis management, preparedness and recovery. Using this research at an economic level, it's important to start off and see how travel and tourism was performing prior to the impact of COVID-19. Here, here are the key data points that we released earlier this year in February, which are the 2019 results. You can see along the top that travel and tourism grew by 3.5% compared to the overall GDP growth of 2.5%. This was actually the ninth consecutive year that travel and tourism has outpaced the global economy. Overall, our sector accounted for 10.3% of global, global GDP and supported 330 million jobs, which is equivalent to 1 in 10, as has been mentioned in previous presentations. An interesting point, though, to highlight is that of all the new jobs created in the world over the last five years, one in every four was in tourism, 
which is fairly impressive. I show this slide, and, and please take note of, of the figures that you see, as it outlays a significant role that travel and tourism played on a global level. And as we, as a sector, we help the global, regional, and country economies to recover and grow stronger once again, once we're through COVID. Now, on a regional level, here, in, here are the numbers for Europe. As you can see, there was just over 37 million jobs supported by travel and tourism, contributing just over two trillion US dollars to the region's economy. Now, as I mentioned, these are the 2019 numbers. What I'm sure you all want to know is, how has COVID-19 affected travel and tourism? Well, since the start of the pandemic, WTDC has been quantifying the potential impact that this will have on GDP and jobs across the sector. Here you will see the global picture with two scenarios. The baseline scenario on the left assumes that by the end of July, we would have already restarted domestic and short haul travel and with intercontinental travel coming back by September. Under these assumptions, we forecasted that there would still be over 121 million jobs lost, which is from the original number remember, of 330 million earlier this year. The downside scenario, however, is, is based on there being further delays to the restarting of travel with the assumption that there might be a potential second wave. If this is to occur, it will be detrimental to the number of jobs lost and GDP contribution will go on over 60%, as you can see. Now, as I mentioned the European status before, I'll, I'll show you how we, how we have the numbers now. We've also broken this down for many other regions around the world. But for Europe, the numbers are much more significant. Most likely, close to 50% of the jobs would have, would have been lost. And if we continue to forward, go forward as we have been, under the current downside scenario, 29 million jobs will be lost from the original figure that, if you remember, was 30, 37 million in 2019. Given the impact that we've all felt from COVID-19, the question or questions you might be asking is, how can we start taking the right steps towards recovery? Are there any solutions that can help? Well, on that notion, to reduce the major challenges that our sector has been facing, WTDC has, from the start, been advocating four core principles for recovery. The first is a coordinated approach between governments and private sector, reopen borders, replacing quarantine measures with corridors or bubbles, and remove barriers such as travel advisors. Secondly, we're calling for a move to a contactless, safe and seamless traveler experience, adding in health and hygiene components. Thirdly, we have constructed with our members and healthcare experts to publish a set of global health and hygiene standards for travel and tourism. Fourthly, but equally just as critical, we are recommending that governments continue to provide support to the sector, given how hard it has been hit and the important role that we can play within the recovery of their economies. These measures include fiscal incentives, interest-free loans, and worker protection, as well as great investment in infrastructure and promotional budgets. Now, incorporating the first two principles from the previous slide for recovery, in collaboration with our members and relevant private sector stakeholders, we have recently produced guidelines for a safe and seamless travel journey. Now, I'm not going to dive too much into the detail. However, the key points to take away is that the private sector is recommending standards to restart in travel. These guidelines focus on testing and tracing, including test certificates, and contactless travel journey which are all designed to fundamentally help rebuild traveller trust and confidence throughout the whole entire world. We've also developed, as I mentioned, industry-specific safe travel protocols. So far, the 10 industries, which you can see on the slide, with one more soon to be added. The aim of, of our members and the private sector is by establishing these baseline protocols, we can build the traveller's confidence back ensuring world-leading health and hygiene standards are being implemented with the protection of consumers and employees throughout the whole travel and tourism framework. Now, building on from the industry-specific guidelines and the, the request from our members to introduce a safe travel stamp. This is to provide a single global indicator for travellers across the world to see that the protocols are in place. These have been endorsed by many important stakeholders across the sector, 
such as the Secretary General of the UNWTO, as they strive to provide the consistency to help rebuild trust and confidence of the traveller. Finally, and now looking towards the consumer, we have launched our Where to Care campaign. You may have seen this on our social channels. And this calls for all travellers to wear a mask while travelling or at indoor venues. This is based on evidence provided by Harvard School of Public Health, the CDC, which is the Centre for Disease Control and Prevention, who point out that the impact of masks can reduce the spread of infection, which is significant and, and you know, what we're really facing here in Europe. Thank you. Thank you so much, Andrew, and also for keeping the, the 10 minutes. I think the, the importance of the of the all the activity that you are doing in the in the WTTC are, are incredible, interesting and important at this moment. I saw in your four principles at the end that the this public-private collaboration seems to be a fundamental for the tourism recovery. So so we really thank you very much for your presentation. And now we pass uh, to, to another representative. Now we pass from the international level to the European level. Well, we have the pleasure to have here Matthias Huom from DigiConnect of the European Commission. And Matthias is an expert in digitizing industries. He is, man is managing the digital agenda of the European Commission. And his expertise spans across, across a variety of areas, particularly artificial intelligence, industry 4.0, blockchains, and innovation management. Matthias, the floor is yours. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I want to present you uh, what the European Commission um, is doing um, with uh, its instruments. And um, we have uh, also some uh, numbers showing uh, the importance of the sector for the European Union. Uh, also, uh, <clears throat> that the sector is uh, hit uh, hardest uh, so i think we are all agree on this and um, this is um, also uh, the starting point for the uh, commission um, <clears throat> to uh, um, make this uh, package on uh, transport and tourism uh, available um, which uh, includes uh, some steps uh, to help the sector uh, for a better recovery. And uh, what's uh, in this package, uh, you can see here, uh, we have uh, different uh, means of support. On the one hand, we want to uh, build uh, confidence uh, among citizens and uh, stimulate uh, the demand um, with tools like our reopen website, uh, which uh, shows what are the current uh, containment measures in the different countries within Europe. What do I have to uh, have as travel documents currently? Um, and also uh, it gives you an overview of uh, these uh, patronate voucher schemes with which we want um, to address uh, the liquidity crunch. <clears throat> so as I said, uh, the tourism and transport package uh, has uh, <clears throat> different um, support schemes. Um, one is um, on um, building the confidence with um, websites like Reopen EU and also uh, sanitary protocols. Uh, the other thing is that we want to um, <clears throat> help uh, with um, tools that um, improve the liquidity of uh, service providers in the tourism industry with uh, voucher schemes like the Petronet vouchers that um, <clears throat> are also supported by uh, different uh, tourism websites um, and we have um, as I will explain a bit in more detail uh, different um, measures to restart the tourism ecosystem um, which starts of course with uh, emergency relief this has already been done and now we're in the phase of, of recovery but we also have to think about the sustainable future for the tourism industry and what is the new normal that was already mentioned by different speakers um, and um, well that's a bit difficult but it's still planned the european tourism convention where we want to discuss this roadmap and um, what 
is central for us, uh, especially as I'm from DigiConnect, you can imagine is uh, that we embrace all digital because uh, digital uh, has uh, shown very helpful uh, during this crisis in uh, different sectors. Uh, it is a <clears throat> good opportunity to uh, react quickly and also to offer touchless services um, and um, in general deal better with this uh, new realities. And so uh, all these uh, measures that we have uh, started uh, before before the crisis uh, to support digital transformation showed to be very useful now also during this crisis. Um, and uh, <clears throat> one thing with which we support um, this digital transformation are our digital innovation hubs. Uh, they are especially addressing <clears throat> small and medium-sized enterprises uh, and uh, help them to adopt digital tools. And um, in the uh, pandemic, uh, they also gave uh, guidance uh, <clears throat> what is needed uh, for SMEs uh, to continue their business, uh, starting with simple things as uh, online working tools, conference tools, and so on, but also um, tools that help to uh, reorganize value chains, to uh, <clears throat> have a better uh, customer contact with uh, these um, new tools. And uh, well, sometimes they seem simple, but they were very helpful in this uh, first response phase. Now <clears throat> we are in this uh, reboot phase uh, where we also see um, <clears throat> how um, good we can progress with uh, companies that already have uh, basic di the digital skills um, to uh, <clears throat> now improve their offerings and uh, adapt them to the new normal. And uh, we have also started, uh, but this is, um, only in the beginning, um, think what does it means now for for uh, new business uh, models, uh, which maybe make use of robotic solutions and uh, <clears throat> such things. And uh, we have also done this uh, with our digital innovation hubs uh, that are active in tourism. We have more than 30 digital innovation hubs active in tourism. Dora Loris leads the one on the Balearis. And uh, <clears throat> here we also started with things we already um, had in our pockets, like uh, the thinking here about what artificial intelligence can play uh, in hospital industry. But uh, with um, <clears throat> this new situation, this got even more important um, as it is a uh, good tool to uh, improve uh, um, agile <clears throat> customer services, uh, a quick response with chatbots and personalized advice, uh, because uh, <clears throat> this high insecurity uh, means that you have uh, much more requests and uh, much more uh, <clears throat> uh, answers to give. And we also have started brainstorming what um, this would mean for the service offering. And um, we have also uh, had some very specific measures. So for example, our um, digital innovation hub, uh, DIH Hero, um, started a um, call on uh, robotics solutions, especially for the health sector, because it was in the beginning uh, mainly the health <coughs> topic in the foreground. And um, there, uh, some disinfection robots uh, were um, developed and uh, they were used. Um, they are used in hospitals, and uh, they are also now increasingly used um, also in the hospitality um, industry. Uh, but um, in other uh, calls, we also had uh, topics like uh, what can we use for crowd management? Uh, how can we improve booking systems? And also chatbots, as I mentioned. Uh, also the role of uh, digital menus uh, to uh, enable this uh, touchless um, service uh, delivery and um, also the role of robots I've uh, already mentioned. Here you can see once again um, the digital innovation hubs that are specialized uh, on the tourism sector and uh, in the tourism package we also uh, announced a dedicated hackathon um, <clears throat> to develop uh, quickly um, digital solutions uh, for this tourism season and uh, this hackathon took place uh, beginning of July and there we had uh, 130 contributors from across uh, Europe and also Israel um, who developed um, <clears throat> solutions to address uh, really um, <clears throat> the current challenges um, in the tourism industry and um, we also think that uh, with um, the new uh, <clears throat> Digital Europe program, uh, where we want to increase the capacity of these digital innovation hubs, uh, they will uh, be uh, <coughs> even better prepared um, to 
um, react on um, these um, changing demands and uh, help with uh, digital solutions um, that support this um, low touch economy. Uh, here ca you can uh, see a few. Uh, well, most of them are robotic ones because uh, here the picture is maybe a bit more appealing, but um, most of the solutions are uh, really data based and digital, uh, completely digital. And um, <clears throat> what is important is uh, that uh, these digital innovation hubs uh, will always be flexible enough uh, to react on these changing demands because uh, currently uh, it's difficult to foresee what this uh, will mean for the new normal, for the upcoming normal. Will we have a rise in localism and staycations? As you can see on the left-hand side, will we still have uh, this uh, social distancing measures in the next uh, summer season? Uh, well, there are a lot of uncertainty and uh, to deal with them better, it's good to, to have um, such uh, hubs that can give you a advice on uh, how to make best use of um, digital technologies. And uh, <clears throat> with that, um, I want uh, to conclude. Here you can see the links uh, to the information. Um, with um, different measures, especially with measures um, helping to uh, make use of innovative digital solutions, uh, we have already started um, to support these small service providers in the tourism industry, and uh, we are looking forward uh, to even increase this in the future. So, thanks. This was it from my side. Thank you so much, Matthias. A very nice presentation speaking about this sustainable future for, 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 for the tourism industry. I think it's very important also the, the role that the digital innovation hubs are going to play, especially in the, in the future programs. And I think these, these two words, flexibility and uncertainty, that we, we will have to face in the, in the next years. And, and we really need these, these tools, these instruments just to, to face these new situations. Now uh, we go from, from the European level, we move to the, to the national level with Edurne Vidal uh, from uh, Segitur. Uh, she is the uh, project manager and responsible for the smart, the smart Destination programs, which is a pioneer at, at, at international level. She has uh, 14 years experience within the Spanish Tourist Administration, and she's also professor of tourism policy, strategic marketing management, and tourism promotion. Her presentation addresses the, way, the ways in which smart destinations are a powerful catalyst for digitization and innovation in tourism. Edurne, thank you very much for being here. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Dolores. Um, thank you very much for Fawir Foundation for counting on Sagitur to, to participate in this tourism day. Thank you to N Solution for inviting us as well. Thank you all, uh, speakers and colleagues today uh, gathered here to talk about this very, very uh, important topic today. Um, we have already had a, an international perspective uh, from the United World Tourism Organization, WDTC, European um, uh, Commission. Now I'm gonna try to give you a national touch representing Sigitur, uh, which is a public uh, owned uh, society depending on the Secretary of uh, for State for Tourism. And so that you have in mind big numbers of the tourism industry in Spain. Um, we are talking about a destination uh, for 84 million international tourists per year, 12% uh, of our uh, national production uh, and 12%, around 13% of our employment. So you can imagine the, the huge impact of this uh, crisis on our um, on our uh, tourism sector and our on our economy. Um, however, long before we were talking about this crisis, we already have been facing many other challenges, and this is how the Smart Tourism Initiative was created, so that we could help destinations reinvent them, themselves to cope with digital travelers needs but also trying to face um, sustainability issues economic issues uh, that we already had in our uh, tourism sector so we have already been working on tourism on smart tourism for the past seven years and we have moved from a theoretical model to a 
very practical model, but we have to start at some point. We have to start at the very basic of the model. What is a smart destination? And um, risking uh, to, to uh, not cope with today's topic, the smart destination is not only about technology. Technology is going to be the lever, the key strategic asset to cope with the rest. But smart destinations are also about innovation, are also about sustainable development, then they have to be accessible and copes with everybody's needs. So governance is going to be another key issue of a smart destination. So we try to fight against the idea that small destinations are all about technology. They are, but technology as a key set asset to help uh, develop the rest of them. So from that basis, we have constructed, we have built a, a complete model in which governance is very, very important. We have a smart destinations network. We have already a theoretical model and the method, methodology uh, to help destinations go to that model. And then we have to have the definition and what we have to have requirements for each of the different uh, axes that compound the model. And then we have already uh, been working on developing common infrastructures, on fostering normalization, standardization within the tourism sector, and developing different pilot projects so to try uh, this methodology and help other destinations join the program and also go to that uh, model and reach and face their challenges. I'm going to give you a slight view of each one of these initiatives to try to focus on how this model right now is contributing to the recovery of the destinations within this uh, particular situation that we are sadly uh, going through. Regarding start, uh, standards, we have uh, developed the first uh, smart destination standards worldwide, starting with a management system for smart destinations, then trying to help tourism leaders understand what kind of tools and what kind of technology issues they would have to focus so that they could um, cope uh, with these challenges. So we have been introducing topics such as interoperability and semantics as well with one specific uh, standard to that and trying to help as well uh, develop standards for um, hotels to, in order to connect them with, uh, with platforms, with information platforms. So um, even we have contributed to the approach of a smart uh, tourism platform uh, within the union, with the International Te uh, Telecommunications Union as well, that was based on the Spanish model of interoperability, which is uh, quite interesting. One of the most uh, recent uh, pilot projects that we have developed was a, the developing of uh, the standard for, on semantics for smart destinations. And also we have created a guidelines so that tourism leaders can easily understand what improvements they could do on their websites so that they could uh, implement these uh, ontologies. And with a specific um, uh, particular issue according to uh, COVID um, semantics, so that they could introduce them in their uh, websites. Another example of these initiatives that we have been developing is the, uh, the guidelines for recovery for smart destinations uh, that we have uh, created with, uh, within the smart destinations network, and it gathers many different initiatives uh, trying to help destinations to cope with this, this uh, uh, specific this situation. I invite you all to visit our website in Sagitur if you are interested in any of these uh, uh, issues so, so that you can download them directly. One of the topics that has already been uh, mentioned by all the preceding um, uh, colleagues uh, is uh, governance and how important it has always been to work together and cooperation within the tourism sector, but today even more. And that is why our smart destinations model in Spain is based specifically on 
cooperation, public, pu uh, public cooperation and public private cooperation as well. Um, we have developed this smart destinations network so that destinations, administrations, institutions and private uh, businesses can gather together to contribute developing uh, smarter destinations. As a matter of fact, we are already uh, 100 and almost 50 members. Uh, Any solution uh, was, uh, as a matter of fact, one of them. And uh, it, it has proved to be one of the most important tools that we already have to, to help destinations cope with this specific uh, crisis. When I was talking about the theoretical model and methodology for destinations, the first step that they have to do is plan to know their specific needs and after that, deploy infrastructure. We have seen very uh, successful experiences, but we have seen some others that have not been so successful. And this is because we tend to construct and build and invest in infrastructure and technologies without even thinking about these issues such as interoperability and, and many other and, and scaling those technologies for our very specific needs. So we are trying to help destinations to, uh, to involve themselves in this continuous uh, improvement process uh, based on those requirements that cover governance, innovation, technology, sustainability, and accessibility needs. And when they know how they comply with this methodology, we try to help them to build a roadmap so that they can invest properly in the destination. This methodology was first based uh, on national and international guidelines uh, worldwide. And it has been the opposite right now when these uh, international uh, institutions have recognized uh, our Spanish uh, Smart Destinations model uh, and implementing them uh, in their own initiative. So we have to be quite proud about this uh, Smart Destinations uh, model. So we have already uh, made an effort to cross our guidelines and uh, requirements uh, with the United Nations uh, Sustainable Development Goals so that we can help and contribute uh, to, to, um, to comply with, this, um, with, with these goals. And we have already implemented this methodology in uh, more than 40 uh, destinations in Spain. Here you have the, the spread of the program and a few uh, uh, success projects uh, worldwide. But the most important thing about this uh, methodology is the results we are obtaining about uh, observing what's really going on within the, the territories. And it's helping us make better policies. So after we work on the destinations, we can get, sorry, we can get uh, an approach uh, and a measurement, uh, a degree of compliance. And what is this saying about what's going on within the territory? It's saying that we have big challenges uh, ahead. It says that we are coping quite, as, quite well with governance. It is something that we already did uh, okay within the tourism sector. We are coping with sustainability, but we have three big challenges ahead which are accessibility, which is always a challenge for, uh, for territories, but also technology and innovation, which are also the most important catalyst to cope with these situations and, and digital um, challenges. So we have seen that when we go to destinations, they have really big problems in implementing and coping with these uh, requirements. From this uh, methodology, uh, we were forced to review all requirements and try to help tourism leaders to strengthen and, and meet the most immediate needs of tourists and, and their own territories. So, because we have seen that uh, all traditional data and, and sources of information have lost their validity. We've got uh, obsolete models, products and experiences we don't really know what new tourists would, would need. We can imagine, but we don't really know for sure. And even though we, we all try to uh, draw our own uh, recovery scenarios, the truth is that 
we live in a VUCA world now more than ever, and uncertainty is the most, the big word of the situation. So we have to stay vigilant, and that's what we are doing uh, within Sagitur and within the, uh, the Smart Destinations uh, Network to help tourism leaders cope with this uh, situation. Specifically, within the technology approach, we are trying to uh, identify technology for better governance, uh, technology for tourism marketing, infrastructures, connectivity, sensors and platforms, and of course for tourism uh, knowledge. That is why uh, initiatives such as uh, Fiverr uh, are quite important because uh, with this uh, kind of platform, platforms and open source uh, solutions, we are going to help uh, destinations uh, uh, build smarter uh, territories. And uh, if we focus on, on those phases of recovery that we were facing, um, from the technology perspective, because we have seen that um, governance is also going to be key, uh, we'll have to, to have a permanent look at marketing, uh, um, adjustment, adjustments, uh, we'll have to cope with uh, security, safety and security protocols, of course, but I, I would like to focus just on the technology approach. We uh, thought about three, four different stages of this uh, recovery. The very short term, which was the complete stoppage situation that we faced back in, in March and April, it was a time to rethink infrastructure and technology tools, to have a look at what we have, to have a look at what we need and adapt content and uh, real-time information. That's what the tourists were needing, even though, even though they, were, they were not really thinking about traveling at the very, that very moment. But just in case they would need that information, that we had to uh, provide them with it. In the short term, we have started uh, adapting our technologies and introducing uh, those technologies within all the tourism chain of value. Uh, we are le uh, leveraging technologies uh, to avoid contact, so contactless technologies are going to be key uh, now and in the in the in the near future. And uh, we'll have to think about uh, target technology platforms to provide real-time information and cope with these uh, data and source uh, issues that we already have. So, in conclusion. Um, Technology, technology is, uh, of course, going to be the, the, la the lever to adapt our supply, uh, to cope with environment issues, uh, to help contribute uh, and uh, management and our marketing and knowledge uh, strategies. But, uh, of course, planning first and trying to help and never forget about another other important access such as governance, sustainability, innovation, and accessibility. So um, let's make, make uh, technology that strategic asset. Um, stay vigilant uh, and stay safe. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Edurne, for, for your nice presentation. I think uh, this part of reinventing destinations uh, based on the on these five pillars and the fact to pass from the theory to practice has demonstrated uh, the success of this strategy, a smart destination strategy that uh, we, we can proudly say this made in Spain strategy that now is being exported worldwide. So thank you very much for, for your presentation. So we have decided uh, to change, to make a very small change with this uh, passing now with the question and answer session and therefore also recovering the timeline of the, of the agenda. So please, if you have any any question for 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 the speakers, uh, make it through the chat and and we will make it. Uh, Doris, I can read the question for you. That uh, the fiscal policy approach to uh, the instrument and are often needed in in order to create the monetary uh, incentives required for a sustainable and digital tourism sector. So how uh, how about the destinations that may not have that and how can they become digitally attractive and sustainable? Well, uh, we think that the, all the tourism policies at the end, uh, they're, they're, they should be based in a, in a public-private collaboration. So tourism is one of the most uh, fragmented industries in the world in which 
there are a lot of different uh, entities and actors that are uh, that are working together to make a, 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 a smart destination uh, a success. So there are different uh, fiscal policies in in all the the smart destination. Indeed, uh, the differences between the countries and also within the regions are completely different, and and this has an impact, of, especially on how the the this money is uh, addressed to the sustainability or other key aspects of, of a destination. So it could be uh, related, as this is uh, the, the tourism tax that we are funding in, in different hotels all over the world, or the entrance to different places, uh, tourism attractions. How the, is this money addressed to take care of the, of the destination? It's key to preserve the destination and to keep it for, for the future. So sustainability is, is a key issue. I think it, it's a word that almost, almost all the speakers have already mentioned. And uh, then when you are mixing this digital attractive and sustainability is to, as, as Edurne has said, uh, a smart destination is not all about uh, uh, technology. So the combination of the uh, technologies available with the sustainable uh, policies, it's uh, key to get uh, smart uh, destinations. So I see uh, another question that could be done for uh, I think perhaps with for Edurne. Edurne, which is the which is the key for for the success of a smart destination? Thanks, uh, Dolores. Uh, very interesting question because uh, from the uh, from the very beginning of the deployment of the smart destinations initiative in Spain, we have developing pilot projects so that we could check what precisely were the key uh, success points. And one of the most important ones is not even within the, the, the methodology, it's not governance, it's not technology, sustainability. And the most important, th important thing is leadership and commitment, because smart destinations are also about the long haul commitment. They, they're going to uh, imply many, many investments for different areas. So this leadership is going to be key. There's has, there has to be a person in charge that encourages the tourism sector to, to follow and commitment for the long haul, I would say. What do you think? No, no, yes. would you like to add anything? I, I agree completely with you. So uh, we have another question for, for Matthias. So are there any new uh, funding opportunities from the European Commission and other public bodies in terms of technology, sustainability, innovation for destinations to tackle the crisis and strengthen the industry? Um, we don't have a specific uh, program uh, addressing the tourism uh, industry to develop uh, these technical solutions, uh, but uh, we have um, different uh, more technology oriented uh, programs like uh, once on robotics or once on data spaces and so on and uh, as i want to uh, try to describe uh, in my presentation a good starting point are always the digital innovation hubs because they should know what is happening uh, <laughs> on the european level and they can bring you into contact uh, with running projects they can also initiate small experiments um, where you can test technology and uh, for these uh, digital innovation hubs, uh, we will have the new Digital Europe program that uh, will start uh, next year. And uh, we are currently in different member states. Uh, there are expressions of interest uh, where um, consortia can apply for this um, new European Digital Innovation Hub program. Um, and uh, yeah, this is, um, I think, uh, currently uh, <clears throat> the best uh, way to to uh, get in touch with the ones who develop uh, technologies also for the tourism sector. Yes, thank you, Matthias. It could be great also to see tourism in the in the future program. So I think uh, we, we're, we're always waiting for that. So um, I'm going to make a, a last question uh, to uh, to Andrew. So and, and we will continue with the with the next speaker. So then can, we, we can continue with the agenda. And at the end, we will have again these questions and answers. So, Andrew, so we, we, we mentioned about this uh, public-private collaboration 
uh, as a key aspect in, in your presentation and all the research you are doing and all these uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, studies on in which you, you are highlighting the, the importance of, of tourism. But in, the, in a practical way, since you are a worldwide entity, how it is working? So, uh, and now how it's uh, the application at, at, at a, a, a lower scale, so at local level or at, at national level? Yeah, great. No, great question. Thank you for that. So in terms of the, the protocols that I mentioned, so the, the 10 protocols that cover the industries of one more soon to come, um, and the safe travel stamps, initially the, the stamp was available for everyone to take on board and, and say that they would enforce those protocols. Uh, we've, we've taken a slight uh, different option now and providing it to destinations, so at the city level, regional level, or country level, to, to take on the stamp and distribute it to their stakeholders. So for example, I know we have folks on the on the call from Nice, so, so they could take on the, the stamp and then have their local stakeholders uh, apply to be part of that and, and taking on the, the safe and hygiene protocols. Um, the collaboration to, to do that is to ensure that whilst we are over the global level, we're not too sure of who is on the ground, so that the local stakeholders will have the better idea of of having that and building the confidence back of the traveller as they, they move in and travel to places like Nice or Malaga or Spain, etc. So if anyone would like to know more about them and how to become a, a safe travel stamp advocate, please let me know um, and we can put you in touch with the relevant people at WTDC because we're, we're looking for more destinations to take that on to, to build the confidence back of the traveller, which means that more people are, are going to start travelling again. Yeah, at the end, when you are working at, at the global level, I think it's very important this this collaboration. So, thank you so much because uh, you are going, uh, you are doing a, a great a great job on that. So, uh, if you, we don't find any more, well, this comment uh, from uh, with the blog technology for tourists, okay? Uh, we don't see for Matthias this comment. Thank you very much. The next generation you, okay. So we don't see any more questions, but uh, as mentioned, we will have uh, a next question and answer session after the next speakers. So we will uh, pass to, to the next ones and we will start with uh, uh, Juan Joyero, which is the CTO at uh, Fiber Foundation and how uh, Juanjo will introduce Fiber and the vision on why we believe that it is an appropriate technology for tourism. So Juanjo, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Dolores. So, uh, thank you for being part of this uh, quite interesting uh, day on smart tourism, smart destination. Uh, well, uh, Dolores was mentioning that technology is not a goal per se, and, and, and that is true. Uh, certainly, we, we have to uh, take a careful look about what are the goals and uh, what are the business models behind smart destinations. But a bit the question I will try to answer and, and um, elaborating on what Fiber could bring is the question about can technology be an enabler for uh, smart destinations? So in the presentations uh, we have had so far, uh, um, somehow there is a concept uh, a bit emerging, which is smart destinations are a, a very good example of why the creation of uh, digital service infrastructures that may help to merge data coming from different domains uh, would be definitely helpful. Uh, helpful among other things to bring the kind of experience that uh, we want to offer to visitors, merging information coming from the city, uh, information being handled by the ports where the visitors, uh, uh, through, the, through which the visitors arrive, uh, how they can uh, transition and, 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 and transport uh, within the city, but also through the roads going to uh, destinations which might be in rural areas and, and so on. How can we uh, uh, merge all that data um, and how we can uh, a bit uh, uh, provide the sort of data service infrastructures that the notion of uh, smart destinations um, uh, require? Well, 
this is where fireware we believe um, provides uh, the very basis for development of smart applications that will help to materialize this concept of a smart destination smart destinations and 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 what fireware will bring is the ability to gather data from many different sources, might be sensors, might be information systems uh, of different kind, to create a digital twin representation of the real world. That real world where visitors uh, are, are um, you know, living their experiences, uh, uh, which is a living real world constantly changing and uh, the very uh, basic concept that Fiverr brings is the ability to provide a digital representation of that real world, constantly updated in real time, constantly analyzed and bringing support to the analysis and process of this information to deliver uh, this kind of a smart experience to end users and the support also to, of the smart uh, decisions by the destination managers. Um, Fireware, in that respect, is driving uh, two key platform standards that uh, smart destinations and, and also a green economy demands. First of all, the API uh, that is required to get access to that real-time information. What is the location of a given transport that the visitor wants to take? What are the preferences of that visitor? And, and be able to exploit that information, uh, information about restaurants, uh, their location, price levels, opinions, ratings by the different users. Also, uh, the second concept uh, we, uh, we want to, and uh, we need to standardize for uh, smart tourism and the smart tourism supporting a green economy is what are the data models, the semantics of the this way to describe the world, uh, how I can model a visitor, how can I model a restaurant, how we can model a museum, a bus, all these entities around which processing of information, the different smart application for tourism will be created. I will not uh, uh, elaborate that much on this because later on Gonzalo will come with uh, more details about what we are trying to bring uh, within Fireware, uh, um, within the Fireware initiative. These uh, standards, the API, the data models, uh, we are proud to say are gradually more and more getting adopted, uh, getting endorsed by a number of relevant organizations at global level. First of all, the API has been standardized by ETSI, so we have now the opportunity to refer and to bring support uh, as, as, as the basis for this data service infrastructure, an API that is standard-based. Uh, secondly, there are organizations like ESMA, the Association for All Mobile Operators, that have also agreed that this is the kind of technology that may support different um, uh, IoT-based solutions like a smart uh, tourism and a smart destinations could be. And very important within Europe is the, uh, the fact that the uh, Connecting Europe uh, facility program has adopted this API, this context broker core technology of Fireware to bring support to the right access, right time access to information that will be essential for creating the kind of uh, the smart destination solutions of the future. We are also uh, receiving the endorsements of organizations like PM Forum that are collaborating with us in the definition of the data models uh, I was mentioning before. All in turn, uh, trying to uh, uh, help setting up an architecture where uh, through uh, the instantiation of this context broker technology, we will be able to get access to information from the different sources and that might be relevant for, um, for any kind of a smart uh, solution for uh, a smart destinations. Um, this uh, digital service infrastructure, which will keep this digital twin representation of the real world, 
may will be fit by many different kind of organizations and smart solutions, smart cities, internet services like weather forecast services, social networks, smart spaces, smart ports, all these uh, actors and that uh, help to build this digital twin representation of the world are essential to be uh, integrated in a, in a common way, uh, uh, following uh, same uh, data models and leveraging on a common standard API for getting access to the information. Based on those standards is how we will be able to enable the flourishing of a number of the smart uh, applications for tourism, for smart destinations, which will be processing that part of the data they are interested in, performing uh, uh, a big data analysis, not only considering the current data information, but also all the history that has been accumulated, uh, the preference, etc. Also applying uh, innovative AI techniques and so on. Very important is the vision the city or the agencies between the different uh, ports and elements we need to integrate uh, may not be the ones that are going to create that killer application for smart destinations. We have to enable open innovation by means of making this data available through a common uh, digital service infrastructure uh, across uh, that whole uh, that works across domains that works across countries and cities so that solutions can be developed once and replicated in in every domain very important also how to intense incentivate that data is made available for creation of those applications and here we have to not only think about open data that the different public administrations can bring and make available. We have to think about how to create the incentives for the private sector to share the data, for the individuals to share data. And one way to do this is by monetizing, enabling monetization of data. Therefore, one also very important ingredient in the architecture we envision and we are enabling with Fiverr is that of creating data marketplaces where um, the different data providers can expose data resources and be able to monetize them. Last slide to kind of uh, bring a summary of what fiber standards will help to boost and, and how it, uh, they will enable materialization of the smart destination concept. First of all, because we are creating a common infrastructure with common data models, what we are enabling is that these entrepreneurs, uh, startups, uh, SMEs, very agile companies will be able to create solutions with the incentive that those solutions will be replicated uh, in different cities, in different territories, in different countries, and that will really boost the uh, economies of the scale that will support innovation. Uh, second concept is that of supporting multi-site market creation. This is what I was referring to with this idea of making uh, uh, potential data providers find the incentives to share their data, partner with uh, uh, application providers, partner with other data providers to bundle data and bring more value and uh, this way creating quite innovative um, and disruptive business models. Right-hand access to the information is crucial and this is what Fiware with the, the standard API and GSI that uh, it supports uh, will enable. Interoperability uh, within and across the main is crucial because a smart destination will not only leverage on smart city data but data coming from other sectors and the, the, the vision of, of having these standards will ultimately lead uh, uh, to creation of uh, innovative services that will help to uh, extract better insights by merging data coming from different sectors and the fact that the data models that 
the API is common across regions, across countries, will help to share uh, best practices, will help to benchmark the different solutions that have been put in place in each territory, uh, ultimately, uh, you know, uh, uh, bringing better services for the end users. Well, that is a bit the summary, and now uh, I think uh, Gonzalo will elaborate further on what um, uh, we are doing specifically with FIWARE and for smart destinations. Thank you. Thank you very much, Juanjo, for, for your presentation. It's very interesting to see how uh, a great initiative uh, um, as, as FIWARE um, uh, is, has focused now in, 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 in the tourism also in this uh, part of uh, this uh, cross so uh, to see tourism as this uh, cross domain strategic industry so you, you know that uh, it, I think it's key for for all the um, destination that we are working for many years in, in convincing about the importance of data and now I think the initiatives as the ones you are, you are leading are very important to to convince and to demonstrate the potential of the tourism industry. And now we pass to the to the next speaker is uh, Gonzalo Alfredo La Rosa, is the executive director of Institute uh, in, uh, Institute uh, Things of the Future. So yesterday they, la they launched the International Fair of a Smart Tourism Destination, a big success. And, and Gonzalo will speak about uh, uh, Fiber Smart Tourism Initiative that is uh, uh, currently implemented and, and explain how open source and spyware can contribute to the new paradigms, paradigms of, of tourism. So Gonzalo, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you Dolores. Hi everybody. Uh, my name is Gonzalo La Rosa and thanks to the, I want to thank to the Fiber Foundation. Uh, of course, Dolores, Angeles, uh, Val, uh, Ulrich and all the, the great team that you have over there for, for allowing us to organize and be part of this uh, webinar. Um, belonging to the Fireware Foundation offers uh, us this type of, of opportunity, right? Um, we are now able to be part of an international uh, virtual event and to show the achievements that we are having in our Fireware iHub. Yes, I will. I will try to. Uh, Put my camera on here. Now you can see me. Okay. Well, um, as I said, uh, that is very important to to talk about smart destination in this in this uh, context in this COVID uh, context. This is the 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 agenda of the session. Um, when we are, we are talking about open source and, and fiber, uh, maybe Juanjo had uh, explained the fiber architecture uh, better than me. <laughs> and in, in its context, uh, broker, uh, better than anyone maybe. So I won't go into these day, this details, but I want, to, I want to talk about the mission of, of fiber. The fiber is, um, well, it's an open source and sustainable um, tool around royalty free, as it says, that is exactly the mission of a fireware institution, right? We can say here that uh, we have a lot of components around fireware that are all open source and, and, and they facilitate the development of applications across multiple sectors. Juanjo told us about open source uh, and the contest broker. Um, and here we, we, we show uh, some applications that we can uh, get in a smart destination, that is uh, the, the symbol of, of Sechi Tour smart destination, uh, where we have a lot of entities called uh, entities in a, in a digital world, as a mountain tourist experience itself, a hotel, beach, um, the tourists uh, themselves too, uh, and all have uh, an application or service that uh, the fiber, um, that fiber uh, APIs and the fiber context broker can manage uh, their data to just to uh, to help the the smart destinations or the tourist destinations uh, to become in 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 better. Uh, better 
better, better managers of these data models, right? When we talk about data generation and collection, we, we have to talk about the importance of data collection. Um, we have to we have to talk about that we would have detailed and accurate information, right? Um, what it, what it means? It means that we can make successful segmentation of all the tourists. We need to know we need to know and keep in mind that we are reopening the tourists, so we need to uh, to talk or to speak directly to the to that tourists and know about their interests and invite them to our destinations so uh, that's why uh, we need to have a, a reflective decision making um, having this that this data managed and then comp competitive advantages of course because um, just keep in mind that uh, with the reopening of the of the tourist market at, the, at that time uh, will be many of all many of all who will compete for the same market right for the same cake and and that is so important the, uh, to having data collected uh, because we have to analyze that and and there are some some uh, numbers about uh, the the importance of having uh, human talent uh, in analyzing this data as, as you see currently only uh, 0.5% of all data produced is analyzed. The amount of data generated will increase 75 times more than what is currently generated due to the implementation of new technologies. And there will be more than uh, 50,000 million smart devices connected, not only smartphones, of course, connected around the world generating data. So there's uh, very important to have this data collected and the, and the data generation uh, as Juanjo talked about it uh, before uh, before me uh, we have a lot of, of or multiple of uh, of data data generators and we have to collect a large volume of daily data tourists as you say maybe loads launching social networks uh, um, structure and non-structure data uh, about tourism transport purchases websites applications right airlines airports there's a lot of data in the context on a tourist destination here we see uh, uh, Sechitur's model, uh, there's, a, there's a, a picture of Sechitur's model, uh, where we can see in, in these di di dimensions that uh, Edurne uh, talked about them uh, better than me, uh, we can see that there's a lot of uh, entities uh, on smart destination that we have to take care about this data, right? And when we see the Invatur, the Valencian Institute of Touristic Technologies on the, on the Valencian community, we have two their, uh, models about uh, some uh, smart territories uh, like smart beach or smart mountain, a smart town or smart village. And on, on all these models, we have to collect data from multiple multiple uh, kind of sensors on multiple kind of sources so what we talk about uh, when we are talking about data analysts on firewall right uh, as as Juanjo talk about the context broker we can see that uh, and, and he tell about the, the digital tree representation that that's a, a, a context representation uh, from the real world the most important thing of this digital twin representation and, and the information that we have in the context broker is just to not, not only to capture it, just to process it and to actuate with that data and with that information, just to, just to transform the data into information and the information into knowledge. That is the importance of this of this data analysis analysis and this. Um, smart uh, destination context data 
So as it says uh, below, uh, the destination is in a better position to project new actions and guide the promotion of its destinations. So when we talk about data normalization, and that is one of the core uh, uh, themes or the core targets of, of this session, um, I, I like to, to talk about Enrique Martinez uh, uh, um, talking about the uh, data normalization and Edurne talk about the, the, the UNE standards. Uh, it talk about influence the behavior of travelers, right? And, and they talk about to improve their experience and increase their satisfaction uh, and increase the, tour the tourist spending, right? What is a data normalization? It is just to standardize the data and, as, as we said, better, get better informed and more aware of local tourist management. This is very important, just not only for the public sector, but also for the private sector, for all the, um, the enterprises on tourists and all the technology uh, enterprises. When we talk about data normalization in tourists, of course, uh, we can talk about that everything is connected and will be connected in the intelligent digital light. Uh, we have in, uh, in this picture a lot of entities uh, as like a tourist and a hotel, uh, an, an attractive or, or point of interest, a tourist office maybe, and it all goes around a tourist destination that have each of these entities have all a definition of its attributes. That is what we have to standardize. And in fact, well, yes, of course. Bonnie. Thank you. Bonnie. Thank you. When we talk about data models, that is that is the, the, the core the core thing about this. We talk about tourist attractions, maybe in fact, where we have data data models, data models about tourist attractions like point of interest or green space, beach museum. We have also this, or about the environment that uh, could be interested for the, for the tourist things. And we wanted to talk about the Argentine, the Argentine network of smart tourist destinations that we are starting with 115 uh, local governments uh, working on this standardization and normalization of data because we want to not only just to uh, get in, get in, get in the, the same uh, digital language with all these uh, state, uh, with all the, the attraction and all the tourist providers and the and the and the point of interest in the in the destiny, because we have a lot of stakeholders and different stakeholders. So all the stakeholders in all these local government cities and rural uh, villages, we have to talk all the same digital language. That is the importance of this. And the second thing that we, go, we are doing in, in our tourist uh, network is um, that we have to talk about a self-appraisal, a self-appraisal uh, using the one of the, the UNES standards talking about indicators. So we are using the key performance indicators that is one of the data models in, in FIWARE 2. So I wanted to talk about uh, this with you because that, that is uh, some things that uh, when we are talking about these smart data models, uh, we can uh, get involved in this. And how, how we get involved with this, and what we are doing now in the FIWARE Foundation. Okay, we created the working group with the purpose of normalizing the smart destination data. Yes, we are based on the on another UNES standard, uh, UNES standard that is the 178503, and it's semantics manual that is a, a, a digital semantics manual. We are going to have monthly meetings and we are going to analyze the multiple uh, data sources and, and getting involved with another uh, open data initiatives uh, from, from the public sector, on, from international organizations and for the private sectors. And then we are going to, to get involved with the 
with the front runners programs uh, that Fiverr is getting uh, is is um, collaborating with Team Forum just to get the definition of these common smart data models in collaboration with another series. So at, at last but not least, um, here you have how to join this working group. Just you are, you only have to join the Fireware Foundation. If you are an individual, you can do it uh, for free. If you are a corporate or institutional, you can become a member of the Fireware Foundation. And, and then you have to email just to that email address. And so uh, we invite you just to join this working group. Uh, and thank you very much. There is a, there is another. There is one of the of the public uh, um, things that Fiverr does with with all of us, with all of the IHUBs and the members of the Fiverr Foundation Initiative. Uh, and and that is me. And I only wanted to 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 put it as a, as an example of being part of what what means being part of the Fiverr Foundation. So I hope uh, it would be clear and thank you very much for the time. Thank you very much, Gonzalo. It has been a very interesting uh, presentation, how you are uh, working with, with Fiverr on this part of to speak everybody the, the same digital language. Now we go to, to the, to the uh, new local initiative. So Mark Sanderson from the municipality of, of Malaga. She's the International Economic uh, Development Director. And uh, among other things, he's going to explain why Malaga has been awarded with the title of European Capital of Smart Tourism 2020. So, Mark, floor is yours. Hey, great. Thank you, Dolores, uh, for the introduction and Passover. Um, good afternoon, everyone from, uh, from sunny Malaga. Uh, it's, it is a pleasure for us to have the opportunity uh, to be here today in, the, in the, the tourism day and to be able to participate and to share um, our experiences. Uh, given the situation, uh, obviously the, the status of tourism and how we're all kind of navigating the, the difficult times. Um, on behalf of the mayor, Francisco de la Torre, and of course the deputy mayor for, for tourism here in Malaga, Rosa Sanchez, uh, I just want to thank the Fireware Foundation uh, for giving us uh, the opportunity to, to present today. Uh, today, I, I want to go real quickly. I know we only have 10 minutes. I know it's uh, at the end of the session today, but um, to talk about, I want to share with you all sort of uh, the status of, of Malaga and the tourism industry, uh, talk a little bit about uh, our, our responses uh, given the COVID situation, and then obviously look at some of the solutions uh, around open source and open data uh, that we've that we've been implementing here uh, in the city of Malaga. So uh, just a quick introduction, of course, you know, Malaga is, uh, is the, the sixth largest city in Spain. It's uh, just over a million in population. Um, it's here on the Mediterranean Sea. And uh, it's it's a it's a city that's you know it's the birthplace of Picasso and Antonio Banderas, so it has lots of history and culture uh, that has, has been celebrated over the years. Uh, but it's also a, a technology hub. It's also a transportation hub. It's a very important uh, economic center for this entire region of of Andalusia. Um, most people maybe know or are familiar with Malaga uh, because of the Costa del Sol. Uh, Malaga is certainly the, the, the gateway or the entrance to this region uh, where you find obviously beaches, golf courses, mountains, um, et cetera. Um, and of course, the city of Malaga, uh, you know, we're the transportation uh, entrance when you look at the airport, uh, the seaport, and of course, the high speed train. Um, you know, even though we are only the sixth largest city, uh, we do have one of the busiest airports um, in Spain. Uh, and, and with uh, you know over 19 million passengers uh, a year, so this has been uh, you know something uh, that the city has obviously uh, benefited from having the infrastructure uh, here in, in Malaga. Uh, over over time, though, the city has, has transformed. It's become not only not only the gateway to the Costa del Sol, but became actually a city of museums. Um, so we've we've had a lot of transformation in the downtown area, uh, you know, and renovations and improvements. Um, in, in the pedestrian spaces, as well as the museums. We've added uh, several museums. We have over 38 museums now uh, within the city. Um, so you're looking at some of the, the offers there in Malaga. And this actually helped Malaga really to, to transform uh, to being a, a very important uh, European uh, destination, an urban destination. So not only the gateway to the Costa del Sol, but also a, a tourism destination. And so you can see that uh, here in the graph, uh, we've had a tremendous growth over the last 15 years uh, when it comes to when it comes to tourism. 
um, compared to some of the other cities in Malaga, not only a number of, of overnight stays and visits, uh, but also the number of hotels uh, that are here within the city. Uh, all this, this growth has, has been fantastic for the city, but it's also been, uh, can be challenging. Um, and thanks uh, a lot to the, the ecosystem that, we, that Malaga finds itself in, the innovative ecosystem that, uh, that is Malaga Valley. Uh, we have lots of high tech companies, as you can see um, in this slide here, that uh, have really provided solutions over the years, uh, been a part of sort of the growth and development uh, when it comes to tourism. We have uh, an, an, a technology park uh, of Andalusia, which has over 600 high-tech companies there, you can see. But you, we also have uh, a digital content hub, uh, the Spanish digital content hub here in Malaga. And that hub is, is focusing a lot on, on virtual reality, uh, 3D graphics, uh, animation, uh, and a lot of the solutions that are coming out of there are really uh, important for, for the tourism sector. So we're very fortunate uh, to have this ecosystem to help uh, you know, to complement obviously the tourism offering that we have within the city. We've also been very much involved with, with smart cities. Uh, I know some of the other presenters have talked about the Internet of Things um, and, and also solutions around sustainability. Uh, Malaga is obviously no, no stranger to that as well. We've been participating in, in energy efficiency products, electric mobility projects as well uh, over the years, over the last 15 or 20 years. Um, so you can see some of the solutions uh, that are being utilized here in Malaga using, again, augmented reality, et cetera. Uh, thanks to a lot of our, our efforts, uh, we were fortunate uh, to be named uh, the European capital of, of smart, uh, smart tourism, one of the European capitals, along with, uh, with Gothenburg um, for this year. So this is a, a distinction uh, actually run by the European Commission. Um, and there's uh, it's been running for two years now. There have been uh, 30 or 40 cities that present each year. Uh, in different categories in order to, to achieve this award. And uh, Malaga is very, very fortunate and very happy to have been awarded uh, the title this year. Um, this is obviously an important award for us because it, it sort of recognizes all the, the work that we've done and the projects, uh, the long-term strategy that we had, which is, has been focused on smart tourism, sustainable smart tourism. Uh, and it also you know, provides us with uh, initiatives to, to move forward, right? To work together uh, with the private sector and to continue moving forward. Um, you know, when it comes to the award, uh, this, this group uh, has actually um, they've created a network of European cities. So not only the winners, but also uh, the other cities that have presented. Um, and we, we get together and meet. We're actually meeting quite regularly now, uh, given the situation through virtual meetings uh, uh, twice, uh, twice a, or once every two weeks um, to, to talk about and share best practices and, and look at some of the solutions. Um, the, the, the capital uh, European uh, tourism of smart capital is, I'm sorry, the European Capital Smart Tourism is, is uh, organized around accessibility, sustainability, and digitalization and, and, and creative uh, and uh, cultural heritage. So these are the categories that they're looking at. And again, some of the areas that we're sharing uh, our ideas and best practices. Um, this, this award has actually been extended um, out until September of 2021, uh, given the current situation. So we look forward to continue working with other European cities uh, and developing smart tourism solutions. Um, another recognition we've got very recently is uh, to our friends uh, from Setur. Uh, just uh, last week, we were recognized um, by Setur as one of the smart tourist destinations. Um, so we're very obviously proud to be a part of this Spanish uh, recognition and, and working with uh, our, our friends uh, there at Setur, uh, I'm sorry, to, to try to, uh, to work on the methodologies, uh, again, around the different points uh, that uh, the Enduri uh, mentioned earlier about governance, innovation, uh, technology, sustainability, and accessibility. Um, so this is again another area what we're uh, very proud to to be a part of and, and focusing on and, and a recognition. Um, when it when it comes to to COVID, uh, obviously you know Spain was shut down uh, for several months from from the mid March to obviously uh, the mid June, um, and this had a, a devastating impact on on tourism. Um, and so what we did from a city perspective was uh, really try to rally the, uh, the industry uh, through virtual sessions, virtual meetings, uh, different hotels, restaurants, et cetera, uh, listening to their problems and concerns and trying to, to make the most of, uh, of what their, their situation was and understand uh, the impact that it was having. The city itself actually organized uh, several sessions uh, with the mayor uh, to look at, at, at solutions for a recovery plan. 
um, and there were six different sessions that were organized and one of them was focused specifically on tourism. Uh, the plan is actually in its first rough draft and will be published shortly, uh, but looking for ways to, to help that industry. Um, we also uh, created and, and are following obviously the protocols from the Spanish perspective. Um, so you can see in this slide on the left side, you know, uh, the different uh, protocols that were released from the Spanish government uh, for the tourism sector. We have that uh, easily displayed for uh, the industry leaders to find that. We created a, a brand, uh, Malaga Mejor Que Nunca, uh, uh, Malaga Safe For You, uh, which is, you know, an area, uh, an idea, it's a platform with videos and things like that to just talk about um, sort of the, what we, some of the things we mentioned before, the safeness, uh, you know, that people can come to, to the city and enjoy the city. Uh, and then also looking at, at other alternative routes uh, is another uh, program that we've been focusing on as, as well, uh, which is Discover Malaga. We also organized a, um, a Malaga tourism challenge, uh, so a hackathon, and um, you can see some of the numbers there and the people that participated. Um, this was a, a successful sort of brainstorming event with, the, with again, the local industry, um, and we got lots of ideas. And, and as you can imagine, a majority of the ideas were based on, on open data solutions. Um, and luckily and thankfully, uh, the city of Malaga uh, has, a, has an open data platform, is, is one of the leaders uh, when it comes to open data, have uh, some of the most number of data sets in, in all of Spain. Uh, here's the portal that we have. Uh, you can see the different categories and areas where we have some of the information uh, available and some of the applications and things like that that have been developed. So, uh, we were, again, fortunate that we were kind of already in the first step uh, of having the open data available to allow people to create solutions. Here's an example um, of one of the solutions that was created, which is around beach conditions and ab about the capacity for the beaches. Um, so obviously, given the situation and, and social distancing, uh, certain beaches can only have a certain number of people at any given time. So this is an app that was created uh, here locally and with the University of Malaga. Um, and it gives you, uh, as you can see in the green line there, as far as the number of people that are at the beach and so you can decide if you need you can go to the beach or not so this uh, app uses open data as well as uh, artificial intelligence to sort of estimate the number of people and predict sort of what the the uh, capacity will be for the beach um, we've also developed uh, a citizen uh, tourism dashboard uh, this was actually in creation prior to to covid but it is built on open data um, and allows citizens and tourists to to customize the the information that they want to look at when they come to the city um, and as you can see, this is a platform that was actually already built on, on the Fireware, uh, uh, Fireware Foundation, a uh, Fireware platform as well. So this is a, a project uh, that is continuing to develop and in, in the works right now from, from the city of Malaga that uses open, open data. Uh, as finally, we also have a, a chat bot that was created, uh, again, prior to COVID, but has been used and, and continued to develop. Um, a chat bot make, obviously is a lot easier, perhaps sometimes in a dashboard. Um, so it allows, again, citizens and tourists uh, to get information directly from their smartphones. Um, so this this information, this chatbot is actually, uh, it's called uh, Victoria La Malagueña, Victoria being obviously a Spanish name. Um, this information is all pulled from the data sources that you saw before, uh, open source, so allowing, uh, again, tourists to, to get access to information directly from, from their smartphones and not have to go through through a platform as, as well. So, um, and we're also participating uh, in a project around the region of, of Andalusia with other cities uh, here in around Malaga, uh, sharing data. This is a, a platform, it's called the NAC, uh, the, the network and, and connecting uh, to share, uh, again, for the tourism industry specifically. Um, so again, the city of Malaga is very proud and uh, to participate in this project and, and to have the, the local uh, you know, tourism operators participate in this as well. Um, so hopefully that gives you an idea or perspective of, of, of what we're doing here in Malaga when it comes to, to smart, sustainable tourism, um, how we're using some of the awards and recognitions that we've had to, to share best practices uh, across Spain and across Europe. Um, you know, in, in conclusion, some of the ideas that we've thought about is that you know, the, the industry is really kind of uh, starting from, from scratch and starting over. So there's a lot of opportunities to, to focus on where people are getting their data from, where they're getting their information from, uh, and to really redefine the public-private partnership, um, so people, you know, no longer can or can go only to the macro websites. They need to uh, get specific information from the cities or from governments. Um, and so there's an opportunity for the cities and governments to uh, maybe capitalize on that uh, connection with the clients um, and uh, and maybe develop a different type of relationship. So uh, in the end, obviously, uh, this information sharing 
and openness is going to be be key uh, for all of this in order for for tourism to to recover quickly. So um, thank you very much for your time. I hope uh, that was uh, informative for you all. So thank you very much to you, Mark. It has been a, a great uh, presentation. So uh, I think uh, with this explanation, it is clear the well-deserved recognition of the smart tourism capital. And um, for all of us that knows Malaga, so this uh, great transformation that the, the city has done is an example for, for other cities. So thank you so much. And now we go to the last presentation today. It's uh, Alain Chateau and Stefan Rouge from uh, Nice Côte d'Azur. And they will present uh, the, the, this initiative of, of how Nice is enhancing access to tourist destination as well as providing uh, travel-oriented aggregation and mobility-based services for tourists and the local population. Very yours. Good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, so Alain Chateau speaking first. Um, I think that uh, all of you, or most of you, I mean, they know, knows, I mean, uh, the, the, the Nice, uh, the Côte d'Azur area, and uh, indeed for more than a century, um, most of the economy of the Côte d'Azur has been based on uh, on tourism. And uh, when the Christian Strozzi, so the, the mayor of Nice, and, and later I mean, the president of the Metropolis was elected, uh, he wanted to diversify the economy in order to accompany I mean, the development of the territory. But indeed, uh, today in Nice, about 50% of the jobs are still uh, directly or indirectly connected I mean, to tourism activity. And as you can see on this uh, on this map, I mean, uh, the territory of the metropolis, which is a cluster of 49 municipalities, including Nice, uh, is very rich, I mean, from the Mediterranean Sea to the uh, South Alps. And as you can see, we have uh, in Nice, we have uh, beaches, we have uh, seven arbors, but we have also five ski resorts. So we have a very rich uh, 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 territory in terms of tourism activity and attractivity. So I would like to address very quickly, I mean, three challenges. We have three challenges which are very related, I mean, to the to the to tourism. Uh, the first the first thing is that we have a fragmented access, I mean, to the touristic touristic offer. Today there are a large number of tourist players with their own data, and beyond, I mean, uh, the data source which are scattered beyond these uh, across, I mean, these players are not uh, homogeneous in terms of data format. So we have this issue of standardization of the information. The second thing and something we are seeing uh, is, uh, we've been seeing for the last years, is that there is a growing demand for personalized travel experience. And there is really a very rapid development of these mobile uh, applications and companions that the people are using to prepare their, their trip, but also during their stay to organize in real time, I mean, their, their travel and their, and their stay, I mean, in a place. And the third one, which is, let's say, magnified or stressed by the COVID-19 health crisis, is this evolution from a mass tourism to a slow tourism. This is a very important trend, I think, for the next years, for sure, with a, uh, a travel experience which should be more immersive, closer to the territory, its history, the people, and so on, and with a, a balance between the impact of tourism at social, economical, and environment levels. So what are the three objectives? I mean, I could magnify or emphasize today, I mean, uh, related, I mean, to this fireware, uh, smart de destination initiative. The first one is we want to enhance uh, the access, I mean, to the tourist offer for territory. And especially, uh, we want to increase the visibility of the, our local point of interest, events, activities, and especially all these micro, micro companies, micro enterprises, which are located in the rural areas. Uh, the second thing, as I previously mentioned, we want to unify the access to this data and based on a data standard data format and uh, of course i mean standardized api the second point is uh, and i think was mentioned by previous speakers is uh, there is a necessity i mean to offer a tourist experience which is really based on the context which means aggregated uh, a lot of services which will be based on the individual needs and profile of tourism tourists and we want also because it's very important tourists are moving a lot in the, between different uh, territories and cities and so on so it's very important to support i mean a continuity of service 
So tourists are mobile, and especially, you, you may have noticed, uh, we are located close to the Italian border, we are clo close to Monaco, so the tourists are crossing the border without any, any concerns, I mean, and very often there is a discontinuity of service. And the last thing, which was, I think, already mentioned, is we need to offer very qualified information anywhere, anytime, which means reliable, value authenticated and of course with a secure access and up to date very often I mean the problem of the information is not up to date and the second thing as i mentioned is this interoper interoperability between information tourism system across the border so that's a very important topic i mean we the three challenges i mean we we have been uh, an objectives we are addressing and that uh, stefan now is going to introduce how we are handling I mean, this, uh, this, uh, objectives. Hi everybody. Uh, so Ms. Patadio is now uh, hosting an IT platform dedicated to the quality of digital uh, data produced by its uh, different departments in the daily management of its territory, as well as the data produced by its stakeholders. Uh, its uh, architecture is now open, uh, therefore scalable, based on standard interfaces and standard protocol to guarantee this interoperability with uh, over territorial or business data platform and then its uh, regional uh, replication. Uh, so Ms. Palazzo is involved in uh, the local highways project. Uh, this project demonstrates uh, different ways to involve uh, communities in collaborating, co-creating and co-developing uh, solutions. The city of the innovation platform supporting the demonstrator is based on the fiber generic enablers. And this project shows us how uh, fiber can help us to develop replicable and interoperable platforms. This Cotadu also is involved in the maritime project called the Smart Destination. Uh, it's a part of partnership between the region of Tuscany, uh, Sardinia, Liguria, and Nice. And uh, the Smart Station project aims to establish a digital uh, infrastructure communicating across cross border territories so that the user can have access to tourist information on the other side of the border without uh, using another application. So, so thanks to Smart Destination, uh, for this project, a tourist can not only plan a local visit, but he can also prepare his uh, tourist uh, circuit and his visits over several days between the softer, southern region, Liguria, Tuscany, and Sardinia. All the components are fireware generic and uh, blurs expect the discovery service which was uh, developed uh, for this project. The discovery service is a mechanism that allows an application to obtain the set of information that can respond to user requests even if the if this information is hosted on uh, multiple uh, territories. With this uh, component, so if a user is located near several several regions, the application must be able to obtain all the information from regional platform capable of delivering the information that the user is looking for. So, in terms of this uh, access, I mean, to data uh, related, I mean, to tourism activity, uh, it's important to remember that uh, there is a three phases. I mean, uh, in the tourist experience, there is, I mean, the preparation, the plan of this of the tour, and especially now more and more the customization of the tour by the the tourist itself. And uh, so, we you need a certain type of data at that stage, and then you have uh, this uh, personal guidance during the tour when you are on site. And there is more and more tourists, I mean, coming and let's say adapting, I mean, their 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 tour locally. And we have a, we want also as a as a as a destination marketing or organization, the DMO. I mean, we want also to have the capability to offer access to new events uh, on the in real time in a dynamic way. So that's very important. So the discovery is important. We want also the people to see things maybe they didn't think about when they prepare their tour. 
And that's why, I mean, we need a lot of information, and especially related to the tools themselves. And of course, to provide all the assistance which is necessary, I mean, to the, to the tourists when they are on site, which means even data which are not tourists, for instance, uh, where the, the doctors are, where uh, hospitals, or whatever things, I mean, that you could need, I mean, to, to access it. And then there is something sometimes we underestimate, which is the, the phase after, when the people are back, I mean, uh, the review uh, they are going to make, I mean, in the sharing of information that we do, and all the statistics, I mean, which are very important, again, as a DMO, in order to understand, I mean, how the people behave, where they were coming from, uh, which format, was it a family, was it a single people, couple, and so on. So we have a large number of data which are required for each of these uh, phases uh, in a tourist experience. And uh, now to conclude, I mean, uh, uh, I would like to give just a very prospective vision of where we are, where we are going, and on which topics we are working on. So, what we want is really to broaden the 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 the, the data range uh, that is currently used as of today to enhance the services we can offer. So, the first is a, is an extract of what we are working on, but I think it's probably the most significant uh, uh, areas. The first one is uh, we want to to really allow, I mean, this what we call digital personal guide or mobile companion, whatever type of mobile applications, to uh, to build, I mean, custom thematic tools, uh, which means that uh, it's very important that the informations which are available are uh, context aware, and uh, that the, the, the application, so the guide, I mean, uh, the mobile assistant could uh, match, I mean, this information with the personal profile and the preferences of the tourists, and this is an area where uh, intelligence, uh, artificial intelligence, will be of, of uh, will be very instrumental. And the second thing we are we are looking at uh, offering incentives to expand new horizons and experiences. I talk about discovering this, the discovery of, uh, of an area, and uh, for instance, adding quiz, adding gaming, and this uh, adding uh, bonus points and so on. So things which will be related, I mean, to the to the local experience and which will uh, push push the the tourists, I mean, to, to go beyond, I mean, their initial plan. The second thing is what we call interactive on-site visit. I mean, you are you are uh, you are organizing your own tour to having having the possibility to uh, create virtual assistance based on avatar, for instance, uh, including augmented reality uh, with videos or interactive 3D 3D domains where visiting point of interest. There are a lot of places where you cannot visit everything. Uh, there are places, especially now, where you you cannot uh, uh, host uh, too, ma too many people and so on. And this is a way, I mean, to enlarge, to enrich, I mean, the experience by showing things which are in addition to the to what you are just seeing. And uh, of course, we rely a lot also on short distance connectivity and IoT, obviously, I mean, to create this uh, very dynamic interaction uh, between the tourists and what is doing, what is visiting, what is, what is, what is observing. And the last thing is more in the term of preparation of the tool, so the, the phase one, I would say, is a virtual visit. So to include more virtual reality, especially uh, which could be used to prepare, or even on site, I mean, uh, when you don't have the possibility to access to some place, for instance, for disabled people. So virtual visits is also uh, an important thing. And uh, we think that for teasers, when you prepare a tool, this is also important to help the discovery. So. Again, it's really to enlarge with much more multimedia information, uh, especially in real time and connected real time uh, uh, data in order to create, I mean, this, uh, this uh, deeper link, I mean, either on site or uh, in remote, I mean, with the territory. So thank you for, for your time. I hope we didn't go too, too much beyond, I mean, the, the time which was uh, allocated to us. So well, thank you very much to, to you both for, for the presentation. I think it's very important how you have underlined the importance of data during the, the tourist journey and also this fact of the interoperability of the tourist information cross borders. I think there are key topics and especially in this in a period like uh, this one. So now we, we, we're a little bit uh, uh, running out of time, but uh, we, we kindly ask you to, to remind for the question and answers and the closing remarks, uh, just uh, 20 minutes more, and we will be finished this very interesting uh, uh, day. 
So for the questions and answers, um, uh, we're, we're some questions here for, for our speakers. So for example, for Juanjo, uh, in your presentation, you talk about how uh, we need re uh, re reusable components, interoperable modules and advanceable solutions. Uh, Juanjo, how does Fiverr specifically come into that equation? Well, uh, Fiverr brings uh, a number of um, open source components that, uh, that uh, you can pick and integrate together to to create uh, uh, platforms, the different platforms that a city, that a, a hotel, that a smart port uh, would need to instantiate to, among other things, share data. Um, this is available for free. Uh, uh, it's available on GitHub. Uh, you can visit our website and and check for information about the components. And yeah, um, it's 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 everything available. Uh, and um, you don't need. To, and this is a very important information. You don't need to get uh, all fiber components or, or or nothing so actually the the only mandatory component is the context broker that supports the ngsi uh, uh, api standard um, and but the rest of components are, are there to uh, depending on what are the specific um, and for uh, different purposes you may pick uh, a collection of them and, and create your own platform which can be inst instantiated uh, with the with the um, warranty that uh, uh, through this context broker technology you will be able to interoperate uh, with other instances uh, by different providers oh thank you thank you so much for for this uh, uh, answer so uh, another question we have here for uh, now for for gonzalo so you talk, uh, you talk uh, quite a great deal uh, about how interoperability, the city as a platform, can be an enabler of sustainable digital transformation for the tourism sector. Uh, can you please give us a practical example from Argentina? Uh, thank you for your for your question. Um, we have uh, in the in the Argentine network, uh, we are using the Fiber Cloud now, just to um, connect. You know that uh, there are all uh, powered by solutions uh, that we are uh, improving here um, to um, two software. One is a CRM software just to um, get, get all the, the tourist enterprises of our, all our uh, smart destination or not, not smart yet, but our tourist destinations. We are uh, connecting them to the context broker and we are uh, going to uh, manage the um, the contact information itself and then we are uh, as i said in the in the self uh, appraisal uh, we are going to use uh, that that uh, on 10 on on august 10th uh, we are going to present it and we are going to use the FIWAR uh, KPI uh, data model standards just to uh, calculate the indicators of all our uh, uh, tourist destination in the in the Argentine network. Oh, thank you, thank you so much. Very interesting. Uh, one last question uh, here. It's for for Mark. So, uh, well, uh, I think your, the transformation of Malaga has been an incredible uh, step towards a, a smart destination, a, a smart reference. But how do you help engage citizens in the process, or which is the, the strategy with regard to the, the private sector, Mark? Uh, yes, uh, thank you very much for, for the question. Um, as far as uh, citizen participation and, and private sector, um, as, as I mentioned, um, the, the city has uh, sectorial meetings. For, when it comes to tourism, for example, has sectorial meetings with the different areas, whether it's hotels, restaurants, the museums, uh, and the shops. Um, so we meet with those uh, different, uh, there's some associations, the hotel 
uh, agencies for him, for example, get together. Um, so we were in constant conversations with them. Um, we have a, a tourism forum, uh, which is was established um, over a decade ago, and this is a, a, a monthly meeting that, that gathers these people together. And as I said, we've increased that frequency now, given the COVID situation, um, and divided into different sectors. So uh, we are obviously always listening to uh, to the private sector and the companies that are involved when it comes to tourism. Uh, when you look at citizen participation in general, um, I, you know we have a department within the city of Malaga uh, focused on on citizen participation and integration, um, and they're the ones that are really responsible for uh, making sure that uh, the information that we're sharing, whether it's related to smart cities, whether related to tourism, um, is, is making it to, to all the different uh, you know, neighborhoods of, of Malaga and informing them. So uh, we, it is a, obviously a collaborative um, project always, um, and we're, we're definitely listening to, to the citizens. I'll, I'll also mention that, you know, the, the, the the forums that the that the city organized in the month of June, uh, these were city forums that were open to uh, the entire public, um, so citizens could participate, uh, add their ideas uh, to to the solutions for the recovery of Malaga, not only in the tourism sector but across uh, the different sectors and in, in, in industries. So um, that's how we you know definitely let the citizens participate. Okay, so thank you so much, and you are having more, more questions here in in the chat. Uh, perhaps it's a little bit long, so perhaps if you can keep it shorter uh, or uh, perhaps you can then be in touch with the person that, that asked it. So it said, in the context of five-way meetings regarding tourism being Malaga and European capital uh, for smart tourism, is it Malaga in a better position to cope with COVID-19 scenario than cities has not yet developed a smart tourism strategy? Can you highlight which has been the advantage? Can you elaborate the app related to which capacity, which has been the impact? of this solution regarding how AI was the process and which was the impact of, on other stakeholders, such as hotels, or tour operators? Well, I think it's a very, very long question, but I think there are a few questions in the same sentence. So you can elaborate just a little bit uh, and then perhaps uh, send a, a larger answer to the to the person. Uh, sure, yeah, that's a, a complex <laughs> and multiple questions all, all in one. Um, no, I, I, again, I, as I mentioned in my presentation, uh, I, I think the fact that we we have open data sets, that we have uh, technology companies here, uh, that that, is, that has allowed us to uh, maybe respond a little bit faster than maybe some other destinations. But um, you know, honestly, you know, we're all uh, struggling uh, with the situation and trying to make make the best of it. So um, I, I wouldn't say that that we 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 have an advantage over over other cities, but I, I would say that the the ecosystem, the Malaga Valley uh, ecosystem and the, the companies that are here, the entrepreneurs that are here, um, that certainly helps when it comes to brainstorming and coming up with, with new solutions. Uh, again, the, the application that I showed was the beach solution that was developed here very quickly. So uh, yeah, I think that those are, those are advantages that, that, that we have just because of the people, the talented people that are here in our city. So thank you. Thank you so much. So we are seeing that there are more questions, but uh, we are running out of time and we have to go to the closing remarks. So perhaps, uh, I don't know, if I were organizer, this will be the opportunity to think in, in a new Fiber Tourism Day uh, after summer. But now we have uh, really to go to the closing remarks. And now I will give the floor to Christina Brandstetter, so the Chief Managing Officer of Fiber Foundation. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Dolores. Then uh, from my side, hello again. You heard me in the very, very beginning. Now I'm back at the very end, just before Ulrich. And um, wanted to give a few words um, to build the bridge from what we heard in the very beginning to um, to right now. And I thought that was a very, a very impressive afternoon. Um, also for the fact that we are talking here about uh, an industry that is really in difficulty, not to say a crisis. And um, I just read this morning in a post um, on LinkedIn um, posted by uh, Dublin, the Dublin uh, Tourism Office. They wrote, uh, tourism was first hit, hit hardest, and will take the longest to recover from COVID-19 crisis. And when you think about that, um, I think because we, all, we are all into this, either as a citizen or even working in it, or because we do digital solutions, um, I think we can all see and, and feel that. So this is why I'm 
extremely proud that in today's Fiber Tourism Day, uh, which was actually meant to show how tourism can recover from, from this big downturn, um, that we've really seen um, we've seen over the last months and that surely has not yet come to its peak in terms of challenges and difficulties, that there is movements that can definitely help and um, we've seen very, very concrete um, solutions for this. Um, that's why I think um, we can only point out how important open data and open stores platforms are because they can prove and show that a pickup of the industry thanks to digital solutions can be much quicker and um, with, driven with less cost. And if we can add to this development with Fiverr and the whole ecosystem with all the people that we've also heard and seen today um, to make this happen, then we will all benefit from that either as a citizen or as somebody that really has to gain his life or her life in this industry. And I um, want to pick up the numbers that we've seen just in the beginning of this presentation to make us again aware what that means for us. Because just in Europe, and this is only Europe, we're talking about almost 38 million jobs in tourism and travel. And we're talking about a GDP that is higher than 2 billion. So we can see this is, this is really a tremendous um, task just in, in front of us to make this market again. Um, uh, let's say a success and bring it back to growth and I guess we're also all of us uh, tourists and I think we love to travel and be around and, 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 and see nice new things so the solutions that we've just seen today will help to make um, uh, to make this market again a, a success and said that special thanks again to our moderator awesome moderator Dolores thank you for for guiding us through today's day. Um, also to Argentina, Malaga and Nice, uh, who have really proven that um, what is possible in terms of digital solutions with open data. And um, just before Ulrich gives a uh, final, final closing, I want to let you know again that this makes part of a program, this tourism day makes part of a program that Fiverr has started some months ago in order to show industry specific solutions based on fiber. Uh, we've just done um, a day in energy and for the green economy sector. Just after summer break, we will have other days for industry, for water, for smart cities, for industry. I know I did say that already for mobility. So there's a few up upcoming. If you're interested, bear with us because we will um, promote them surely in a, in a wide way. And maybe you have the chance to participate also to those. Thanks also to your to our media partners. Um, not to forget here, Compass List, EU Observer, and uh, Zoom, Global Smart Cities, and above all, our uh, premium media partner with Business Reporter. Uh, they all support us very, very much in distributing our messages to the world, as you did. So, so thanks a lot, and we hope this was extremely interesting to you. And with that, Ulrich, I'm handing over to you. Ulrich is our if I were CEO, and I'm sure he will have some interesting, very last closing words for all of us. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Christina. And uh, thank you to this impressive lineup of speakers this afternoon on smart destinations. Smart destinations where, and I'm very convinced on this, digitization based on context information management will help our smart destination to deliver the SDGs, the uh, Sustainable Development Goals. And finally, smart destinations means sustainable development of areas and at the same, same time, interaction and integration between citizens, visitors, and the environment. And uh, finally, based on context information, a digital tourist can move around easier and more safe and also make better informed informations. And uh, on the other hand, uh, a location, be it a city, be it a rural area, which is not good for its citizens, fails also to attract tourists. And uh, attracting tourists for a lot of our smart destinations means uh, to have uh, the sea in a good shape, to have the forests in, good shape and uh, here digitization will help us 
And we need simply to move from vision to action. Digitization is a driving force to reach the sustainable development goals and to create a digital, attractive, sustainable and inclusive tourism sector. Um, These smart information systems and technologies um, will integrate a lot of different areas where tourists um, have contact to. And uh, one platform, one technology will not be able to support all of this. And that's why we as Fiverr are working very intensively on an approach we call a system of systems approach, bringing together different platforms, connecting different platforms and supporting whole business processes across these different platforms. And this is an approach uh, which is called a system of systems approach. And at the same time, tourists are global, tourists are traveling around, tourists have the expectation to find similar supports wherever they are traveling. And therefore, cross-border interoperable tourist information systems are a must. And here, standardization comes into the place, standard APIs, standard data models, standard user interfaces to make a tourist digital feel at home wherever he or she is when traveling around. So I can simply ask you, stay in touch with us. There are a lot of different channels. There are a lot of different instruments we are providing. If you have not yet registered to our newsletter, visit our website, register for the newsletter to stay up to date and uh, if you would like to contribute also to the development of the technology, there's also funding available. So uh, open calls, and there will be a lot of open calls coming up. Um, and if you would like to, um, to participate in this, don't hesitate to contact us. Finally, um, also from my side, Dolores, thank you very much for this excellent moderation during this afternoon. It was uh, quite a long uh, agenda for today, but you made it uh, really excellent. And uh, also, thank you very much uh, to our media partners, especially to the business reporter, uh, our new partner here, our premium medium partner. And thank you very much to all of you who joined us, who stayed here during the two and a half hours. And now I'm wishing you a great day and for a lot of you a great vacation during August and stay healthy. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.